Now most players I see tend to stand up and kind of flip at the ball like this. It causes two very big problems. Number one, as I stand up and throw, I'm getting farther away from this golf ball. I also tend to lean back a little bit. It causes a huge contact problem. You see, it's gonna want me to almost hit behind the golf ball a little bit. And if I happen to not hit behind where I'm kind of throwing the club at the ball, I don't have very much forward shaft lean. And when I don't have very much forward lean, the leading edge of the club starts to come up off the ground. So I'm gonna hit everything thin. So it's basically this endless battle of hitting thin shots and heavy shots, thin shots and heavy shots. And it has nothing to do with where you're hitting the ground. It has more to do with how you're moving your body. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I go ahead and get actually closer to the ground, cover the golf ball, and then stay in my posture. Now there's a great way to do this, and I call it the stable fluid spine. So what I'm doing here, and I'm gonna give you a great way to measure this actually too. So I'm gonna start off with one of these belt loop, these uh, sticks through my belt loops. As I set up at a dress, I actually wanna be tilted slightly away from the target. So if I take this other stick, kind of have it representing my spine angle, I'm gonna go ahead and bump my hips forward and tilt my shoulders back a little bit until I'm in what's good posture, what most pro or what all pros would be doing as they set up pretty much. Now from there, I'm slightly behind the golf ball here. That makes it easier for me to come through this shot from the inside, stay down, clear out of the way, just like you're seeing with those pros. If I'm very vertical, now all of a sudden I wanna kinda of stand up and throw. If I get tilted, I can get opening and I can release that club out in front. Now that's one way to check that. I'm gonna put this club straight up and down to this alignment stick. I'm gonna tilt my body until that club hits the inside of my left leg. I should feel a little bit more weight on my right side getting it there very early. The second piece here is when I come to contact, if I'm standing up early, I'm gonna do this and you're gonna see my club on my shoulders is already starting to wanna to hit this bottom stick when, the, when they're way back here. They're almost still pointing toward that camera back there. They're gonna to wanna to hit each other. If I do this properly and I stay in my posture, my shoulder stick isn't gonna catch up to my hip stick until up here. And I'm gonna be having these sticks almost point toward the golf ball this direction toward this camera before the, the shoulder stick actually hits the hip stick. If I do that, then I'm in a great position. I can hit some really, really solid golf shots. So that's piece number one. You really have to be having your shoulders and your body work properly. Let me do that same thing here, and I'll just go ahead and hit one. You'll see how my divot's gonna be nice and clean, and I'm not gonna hit way behind this golf ball because my hips and body are working properly. A Little bit of tilt at a dress, and then from there, I'm gonna feel like my body stays down and my hips stay in their posture as I come, or my shoulders stay in their posture as I come through contact. Let's try that out. There we go, nice and solid. And there, even though I didn't catch as much turf as I'd like, I'd like to hit a little bit more on there because I had good shaft lean because I stayed in my posture, that was still a really nice solid shot even though it was slightly thin. If I would have been standing up out of my posture, that ball would have gone 20 yards shorter. I really would have been, you know, not very good solid strike. So even on your miss hits, these are gonna be better, which is kind of the whole point of this. When you hit a bad shot, it's still pretty good. So let's go ahead and try one more here. Get a little tilt, stay in my posture all the way through contact. There we go, nice and solid there. And again, just a slight divot. It's a little fluffy ground, so you're not gonna take a big divot here. And nice and solid. Now, once we're doing that, let's go ahead and add a little power to it. I'm gonna take that stick again, and all I wanna do is put it across my shoulders, and I wanna make sure in my backswing, I loosen my legs up a little bit so that I can get a good full turn. And now I'm gonna get this stick behind the golf ball in my backswing. If I flip it over the other way, I'm gonna get it all the way down the fairway or as far down the fairway, again, loosen my feet up, let them rotate as I can in the follow through. Once I do that, I'm gonna start having some more power with this. So number one, stay in my posture so I can hit it solid. Number two, let's get loaded up well so that we can have some good speed and some good power as we're hitting these shots. Let's go ahead and give that a whirl. There we go, nice and solid. Pretty long shot with an iron. I got a seven iron here. That's probably going somewhere around 185 today and nice and solid because I'm winding up uh, pretty well there. 
Now the third piece is lag. Here's a great drill for having lag. And these, these five pieces I'm going over, these five fundamentals, are the five fundamentals of the top speed golf system. This is what I base all my methodology, my teaching methodology off of. And this is what makes playing golf really easy. You don't have to worry about a hundred things. Get these five things right, and you're gonna have a great time on the golf course. You're gonna hit some great shots. Now, I wanna go ahead and hold this stick down here like this in a backwards position. And what I wanna feel like I'm doing is if I had my golf club, I'd be holding it like this, going out of that end of the golf club. In my downswing, again, I wanna get this as close to the ground as I can, and I wanna feel like my hands get as low as possible, and this is still pointing behind the golf ball. Once I get to the golf ball, tons of lag, I go ahead and release it as fast as I can. So I'm gonna feel that same thing without a club a few swings. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna feel like my hands get close to the ground. That stays behind the golf ball. Tracing down that target line if we're looking down the line view. And then from there, once it gets to the golf ball, I go ahead and smack myself in the side as quickly as I can. Don't do it too hard, you can hurt your ribs there a little bit. But you just wanna go ahead and do that really fast. Now that lag, the reason that lag is so important is because I'm saving that hit until late in the swing. I'm saving up all that potential energy until late in the swing and then bam, I'm letting it go. I'm getting all that speed at contact instead of casting back up here, letting that club release and then having nothing left for the hit down at the bottom. So I'm gonna feel like I'm getting that stick behind the golf ball and then I'm not gonna release that until the last second. Then I'm really gonna let it fly. There we go. Add a little speed to that one. That one went a long way. Had a nice sound to it. As I started to ramp up the speed, it starts feeling even better. Now the fourth piece is what I call the straight line release. And that ties in exactly with what we just talked about. So even if you have all the lag in the world, it's not gonna do you any good if I don't get rid of it. So the lag creates speed because it saves up this big angle in the downswing and then you release that through contact. If I was to grab my club kind of halfway up the shaft, as I start to come down, that should be leading in front of my hands again, just like that stick pointing behind the golf ball. And then I'm gonna release that and it's only gonna split my forearms for the very first time up here past contact. Now you can see how it's splitting my forearms. That's exactly how I want it to happen in the golf swing. So I'm, I'm opening my body. One of the reasons that we tilted back like that was this reason. I'm opening my body and I'm, lift, I'm releasing that club out in front toward the target. So let's go ahead and try that out here. I'm gonna feel like I really let that club release out in front. I could even put a golf ball about four to five feet in front of my golf ball that I'm hitting down the target line. And I'm gonna feel like I release my club toward that golf ball. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm not releasing it at my ball I'm hitting, I'm releasing it up here toward the ball that's out in front. There we go, dead straight, really nicely hit shot. Doing my practice, my fundamentals, just like everybody else. Now that was your four pieces. There's a fifth piece though that's extremely important. This has to do with your weight shift and how you can get the contact point correct at the bottom of the swing. See, there's two different types of players that struggle with solid contact. Player number one tends to fall back. So the momentum of the body is falling back this way in the downswing. They barely miss out from grounding out back here and kind of flip to, to barely hit that ball a little bit thin. That's gonna cause a lot of chunks and thin shots. Now, player number two, that struggles with ground contact actually does the opposite of that a little bit. They get too far in front. This left shoulder gets in front of their left ankle. So if I was to draw a line down from this, it's actually outside of my ankle and I'm gonna chop down into the golf ball too much. That causes a lot of inconsistency too because this club's coming down on such a steep angle of attack, you have to just be really precise with it. So here's what I wanna feel. Number one, I wanna tilt like we talked about at address. That's gonna get me behind the golf ball slightly. Number two, now in my downswing, I'm gonna keep that slight tilt, but I'm gonna let my weight shift to my front side. So I'm on my front foot, but my upper body is leaning back. That's if you watch pro players, watch them at contact, every single one of them is tilted away from the target with their weight moving to the left. 
I call this the compression line. It helps you compress the golf ball. So I want to be angled back, but my weight is moving to the left. And if I drew a line from the center of my ankle, it would run up through the center of my hip and the center of my shoulder. And that would either be with a short iron right over top of my ankle or slightly behind it. It would never be in front of it and it would never be falling back this way. It's gonna be almost right over top of that ankle, but just slightly, slightly behind. And when I do that properly, that allows me to get a really clean strike time and time again. There we go, hit that one great. So it's that tilted away as you're coming through that allows you to tie that together and get that extreme consistency. And if you look at the pro players, like I said, look at every single one of them, they all look the same at contact. They're all tilted away like that. Now, if there's one thing that I had to pick that would make a lot of this stuff work really well, it would be lag. So if I can get my club to lag and I can be kind of behind this golf ball, I'm gonna get it to release out in front. I'm gonna get it to do a lot of things that I want. Most players, I would say almost all players that I see, tend to stand up and start casting this club right away. They're losing that lag. And once that happens, it's gonna be almost impossible to get any of these five pieces to work correctly. Now I have one of my favorite videos that I'm gonna to show to you for free here in just one second. It's called the knuckle dragger. And this ties a lot of these pieces in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we get set up in our good posture. We get our knuckles of our hand to start working in a particular way down through contact. And once you start to learn how these knuckles should work through contact, it gets a lot easier to get lag. It gets a lot easier to get that straight line release. All this stuff starts pairing together. It all starts to fit together like a hand in a glove. So check out this preview of the video. Go ahead and click the link that you see. There should be an iCard somewhere on your screen. Once you click that, you'll get instant access to that video. If you don't see the iCard, don't worry about that. Go down below in the description and click the link there. It'll take you right over to that knuckle dragger video, which is one of my absolute favorites. You're gonna love this thing. And you're gonna start finally getting that lag, that release out in front that you've always wanted to have. I can't wait to share with you the secrets to making this happen. I'll see you in the knuckle dragger. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now, let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.